1996, Major Al Mustafa executed a plot to incriminate General Oladipodia and get him sacked by Abacha. A person who claimed to be a journalist and who had written some articles in favor of the then Chief of General Staff arranged to have an audience with General Dia in Aso Rock. On the meeting date, the man came out with a tape which bore the diabolical instruction of Al Mustafa asking the man to ask Dia a lot of implicating questions. The man got to Dia but not with the tape as Dia's own security detail seized the tape at the gate. When they played it back, they were surprised by its contents. The so-called journalist was promptly arrested. The matter reported to the Joint Intelligence Board. When the matter was finally investigated, Al Mustafa was not sanctioned for plotting against Oladipodia. Rather, the investigation came with a bizarre conclusion that the matter was not professionally handled. But Dia never got to reflect over this conclusion until he was entrapped by Bamiyi and other northern officers who collaborated against senior Yoruba officers. This time, the entrapment was professionally handled. Hello, 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 Hisplas. Welcome to this episode on Hispo Media. Gabriel here. Four different times, Colonel Yakasai confessed to fellow cool convict in Jaws. He and his strike force trailed Oladipodia to assassinate him. And four different times, the chief of general staff had mother luck on his side. The fifth attempt was designed to be the final. Oladipodia was on his way on the 13th of December to the burial of the mother of Major General Lawrence Onoja, his principal staff officer. Just as he made to enter the aircraft to fly to Makodi in Benue State, a bomb went off, blowing off one of the security men to pieces. Another security man who was with the dead man suffered first-degree burns. He was taken to a hospital where he was soon finished off for fear that he might spill the beans on what he knew about the plan to bomb Dia's plane out of the skies about 10 minutes into the flight. The incident rattled Dia and most soberly, he knew that it was General Abacha and his security team that wanted to blow him out of existence. He immediately told journalists that only God gives and takes life, and he underscores that he was a loyal and dedicated officer. Information supplied by Aso Rock sources holds that Dia put two and two together. He did not miss the significance that the dreaded former National Security Advisor Alhaji Ismail Aguazo and another Abacha Hawk Alhaji Aresokola Alao, who were not traveling, were at the airport at the particular moment. The rush to him immediately the blast happened to explain it away as an accident. Aso Rock sources explain that unconvinced about that, Dia took the matter directly to the head of state, and Abacha reportedly told him, Dipo, forget it, it is only an accident, let's thank Allah. One week after this, they came for Dia. Until January when he appeared before the special investigation panel in Jaws, Dia indeed believed that he and Bamiyi along with the general officer commandings went into the slammer for the coup. But Colonel Frank Omenka was the first to reveal to him that the other accomplices were as free as the bird, and that he, two other Yoruba generals and some others went in jail. The confirming moment came days after when Bamiyi appeared on the side of the prosecution. It was then that he down on Dia that he had all along been ensnared. Please boop the like button on this video, it will go a long way to help us grow this video. Thank you. The special investigation panel sources indicate that all the jigsaw pieces fell in place for Dia. Given the chance to cross-examine him, Dia told Bamiyi, You wear three faces, one to me, another to Abacha, and the last to yourself. He accused Bamiyi of actually plotting a personal coup within the set-up plot to overthrow Abacha. Thus, while he sold a dummy to Dia that he had recruited brigade commanders in the set-up plot, he had actually recruited Lieutenant Condells for his own coup, which was supposed to happen as soon as Dia and others were out of the way. The plan was revealed by Dia. He drew the attention of the panel to the fact that the plot he knew anything about had as goal the confrontation with Abacha and the demand for his resignation as head of state. The speech which Bamiyi was to read was actually prepared by Bamiyi and sent to Dia for his comments. 
Dia told the special investigation panel that he made a few viral correction in the draft and sent it back to the chief of army staff, Major General Ishaya Bamiyi. He told them that if, as the speech had shown, that all the plot has demanded was a freeing of political detainees among others, and the ultimate being the resignation of the head of state, what did Bamiyi need RPGs for? The tribunal sources said that Bamiyi was rattled by the confrontation. Colonel Frank Omenka, who chaired the panel, took exceptions to the replies of Bamiyi to some of the counter-allegations leveled by Dia. He therefore recommended that Bamiyi be arrested and tried along with Dia and the others. This was believed to be the genesis of Colonel Omenka's problem with General Bamiyi, who only bided his time. When the time was ripe for Bamiyi, he not only retired the DMI chief, but got him arrested. Omenka was finally detained over unclear charges of constitutional trade to the head of state and the country. A source close to the tribunal said Dia rejected the services of his assigned lawyers because the lawyers were not allowed to discuss with their clients. He was also aware of the dangers could defense lawyers faced on the Abacha government if the lawyers defend and accuse. Besides, he could predict the outcome of the trial. And also, his favorite lawyer, Major General Saki Mukta, was out of the country on course at that time. As Aso Rock sources explained, the unedited tape of the Dia Bamiyi confrontation was watched by Abacha, but inexplicably, he did nothing about Bamiyi. Rather, he got on the line to Dia, telling him that he believed his testimony, but that he, Dia, needed to do two things before he could be set free. First, he had to implicate the then chief of defense staff and later head of state, General Abdusarami Abubakar. Second, he was to write a letter of apology to the head of state. Sources inside the Rukuba Barracks, Jaws, venue of the trial said, Dia told Abacha to give him some time to think about the offer. When he presented it before Adisa and Olan Riwaju, they reacted differently. While Adisa cautioned against trusting Abacha, Olan Riwaju jumped at the offer pleading with Dia to do anything Abacha said he should do if Darth would secure their release. Dia took Adisa's advice. On the 14th of February 1998, when he and others were arraigned for trial before the special tribunal, the designs Abacha and the attitude of Bami prompted him to make his new famous setup remarks. Ordinarily, would have appreciated the caliber of the tribunal members. Dia began, but this is the first time a case of setting up is becoming a cool case. I am the target and it is organized from the top. I am surprised that the chief of army staff is not here. He, who is the masterminder, the executioner? One of the convicts explained that Dia was indeed emboldened by the fact that Major General Victor Malu, a respected military officer, was the chairman of the tribunal. Malu was known in military circles to be fair and square. But that was until the inaugural sitting of the tribunal, witnessed by the local and international journalists. The next day, when Malo appeared spotting the Abacha is my man badge, the heart of the suspect sank. From then on, he knew that was the end of the road. The direction of the tribunal could be discerned and accurately predicted. If Dia thought his statement would put the Abacha regime in the spotlight, he was right but he did not envisage the immediate danger to himself, and it came swiftly as Army Terror, known as Sergeant Rogers, usually addressed as General even by the real generals, visited him that night and beat him blue and black. He repeated the nocturnal beating twice in successive days. Expectedly, the Malu tribunal passed the death sentence on Dia. While delivering his sentence, Malu alluded to Dia's opening remarks and said that the judgment was based purely on the evidences that were made available to him and that his court has no powers to try anybody who was not on the original charge sheet. That was not the end of Dia's ordeal. While he would await the final pronouncement on the case by Abacha, the head of state was battling ill health. Three days before he died, military sources said an attempt was made to move the convict from Joss possibly to a firing range for execution. However, Brigadier General Peter Shah, GOC Third Armored Division, thwarted the move just before the convicts were to enter the Black Maria. 
He ordered that they be returned to their cells until he got direct clearance from Asso Rock. But at about 2 a.m. on the 8th of June, they were told by one of the convicts that a team led by General Rogers came for them again. Major Al Mustafa had given the clearance on behalf of the Commander-in-Chief. They were told Abuja was the destination, but they ended up in Kanu, Abacha's adopted hometown. There, the Controller General of Prisons, Al Haji Ahmed Jama, who traveled with them, handed them over to one Lieutenant Dagari. They flew to Kanu from Jaws and landed at the Air Force Base in the city. Dagari, Rogers, and three Strike Force men forced the convict to sit on the floor of the vehicles that took them to an unknown place in the town. They did not want the convicts to be recognized as they drove through the town to an unmarked house where they were put in a room and left all by themselves for a few hours. It was in the interval that the condemned men overheard the strike force men who had freshly been issued orders to dispose of Deer and company arguing. Three of them called Bushi, Ike and Abubakar argued against the order. They said they were not ready to carry out such orders anymore especially now that the purpose for which they committed all manners of atrocities was no more. It was one of them later who came in to whisper to Dia and company that General Bacha was dead. He confirmed that they had direct orders from Mustafa to shoot them, but they were no longer ready to carry out the order. One of them was alleged to have later brought pepper soup to the condemned men to watch the good news of Abacha's transition. They were left in that house for a few days before they were later redistributed to different prisons. Adisa was sent to Madugri and Dia to Potiskom. In the meantime, Dia was grateful to Providence for coming through to his rescue. He repeated the same statement he made after the airport bomb blast to the family sources who saw him after Abacha's death. Dia was quoted to have said, Abacha wanted me dead at all costs but I was saved by the grace of the Almighty God. Life belongs to God. It is His to give and take at any time decided only by Him. May the Almighty God have mercy on all of us," he concluded. Please book the like button on this video. It will go a long way to help us grow this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.